Hello everyone, Titanus Fantasia here. Welcome to a short review of Survivoring. In this episode, Cecil takes Squidina and Patrick out into the great outdoors to quote unquote rough it, in a jumbo RV no less. The catch here is that Squidina wants to film a segment of Patrick fending for himself in the wilderness with the bare necessities. But Cecil's comfy plans get in the way. He even declares that the tools Squidina gives to Patrick quote unquote won't fit in the RV. Here I'd like to think that Cecil attempts to steer his kids away for doing something reckless and stupid, but that would be giving Cecil Star way too much credit. The RV has all the latest gizmos and creature comforts. It even has built in anti sea monster protection. Cecil operating the RV felt a lot like someone at United Point and pictures saw Uncle Grandpa and decided to make Cecil an Uncle Grandpa clone for the start of the episode, but that's just a theory. A dumbass theory. As Cecil plans for the two kids to have a stay at the Comfort Lodge, Squidina's plans are all but ruined. Until Squidina has Patrick move the RV, which leads to this happening. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny how Scudina's initial panicky shock is turned into excitement. It adds an element to her character. Even if Patrick did something extremely stupid that will hurt all of them in the long run, if it's good for the show, then she will be okay with it. I like that. It shows that she is a kid at heart. Even though Squidina's plans for a reality competition show seem to be complete, Cecil still has enough gadgets and gizmos to keep the family from having to worry and Patrick from doing anything. Lacking in quality survival footage for her show, Squidina goes off on her own to film an actual staged survival show. This leaves Dumb and Dumber stuck in the wilderness without a shelter and the roofless elements get to them. Cecil tries to build a shelter for them, but let's just say that sea bears are about as good a shelter as Squidward's clarinet talents are for real listening. <laughs> after the sea bear attack, the two think that a monster is after them, leading them to flee in panic. Then they run into Squidina, who has joined an isopod colony. Thinking that she has gone wild, they flee in terror. Since Squidina is so resourceful though, she was able to integrate herself into the colony and get them to build a 5 star resort for her in the kelp woods. And to let you know that we are still watching the Patrick Star Show, it ends with the sea monster randomly attacking them. Because it isn't an episode of the Patrick Star Show if something doesn't make sense. Well, actually a lot of things didn't make sense. But that's the whole point of the show. It doesn't have to be logical to be compelling or funny, and if this 11 minute episode wasn't compelling, then it was funny, and if it wasn't funny, then it was compelling. I'm always a sucker for these great outdoors episodes, and Survivoring is another one of those kooky ones in the genre. It's not as good as, say, the camping episode, what is? But it does hold the candle to the episode where Patrick and Spongebob try to eat each other. And if you were wondering how Cecil, Patrick, and Squidina get out of the forest, well... Let's just say that they were rescued by Mo, and now I want to show you some of my vacation slides. Here you can see an alternate reality where the Chum Bucket is a popular restaurant, and this reality is run by Eugene Krabs. Here's what happens when you don't wash your hands, but you still touch your face. Here's my favorite type of s'mores, raw anchovies. Here is Old Man Jenkins lost in random land. And here's a world where everyone has a toilet for a face. Thank Neptune we don't live in that one. So yeah, Survivoring is a wonderful episode of the Patrick Star Show. You surely will not be toughing it out when watching this one. Thanks for watching. This is Titanius Fantasia turning off the TV, listening to the sweet end credits music for the Patrick Star Show. See you next time. Bye. Remember. There's no forest so dark it could stifle the light of a woman's soul. Wow, that's beautiful, Dad. Thanks! I read it on the wall of the bathroom I built.